In this session, we'll look at creating bathroom elevations and annotations. Since bathrooms are smaller rooms with a lot of fixtures, they can be more challenging. The key areas I'll cover in this session are creating wall elevations and clipped wall elevations, automatic and manual dimensions, creating annotations and schedules, and then scaling and sending the views to layout. Let's begin with a wall elevation. The elevation tools can be found in your menu system underneath the orthographic view tools. On the left hand side of my menu is the cross section, the back clip section, and the wall elevation. I'm going to begin with the wall elevation. The wall elevation restricts the view to a given room. When I use this tool and I come into the shower and I click and drag through the wall, the resulting view is only within the room. There is no platform on the bottom or the top for the ceiling information. The wall elevation is specifically only for the interior space. As I get ready to dimension the wall elevation, I am going to make sure that my save plan view is set to kitchen and bath. Save plan views set up your default settings for your dimension formats, the layers that those dimensions go on, as well as the layers, and look for your text. So the save plan view is a convenient way to do that, and I'm going to be using the kitchen and bath save plan view. To dimension this wall elevation, I'm going to use the automatic elevation dimension tool. This is going to place dimensions to the best of the ability. I do have CAD turned off. This is a spa bench. You can see it omitted the dimension for the spa bench since it's a CAD object. Let's work our way around and clean up the dimensions. Let's begin at the bottom. I'm going to click on the bottom dimension for the center line. At the very end is an extend dimension handle. I'm going to click on this and drag it to the end, pick up the edge of the spa bench and wall. Then using the dimension tool, I'm going to use the specific tool called end end dimension. I'm going to click and drag through the entire room elevation and we'll just pull this down so that it is at the bottom of the dimension string. The next thing is to do some alignment work on the center lines. This is a preference. I like to turn on my crosshairs. I'll go ahead and toggle those on and pull up these centerline dimensions by clicking on the end of it. You can see that I have a red selection handle and the first centerline dimension is now active. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to pull it up towards the object and then I'm just going to repeat this process a handful of times. Pull that up. I like to use these crosshairs to help with the alignment for the two center lines. Then I'm going to click on the center line. It picked up the center of drain. You can see that there. It also picked up the edge for the, as I kind of zoom in, it picked up the edge for the spa bench steam port. Not needed in this particular case. So I'm just going to click on that diamond and pull it off to remove that dimension. Let's move up to the top dimension string. Click on the center line. It picked up the water or valve control for the shower. I'm going to click on that diamond, pull it off, clean that up. The dimension strings are going to the rain heads, which are also aligned with the shower heads. That looks pretty good. And then the next thing I want to do is make vertical center lines. So let's go ahead and select the dimension tool, select the center line dimension tool. When I run my center line dimensions, I'll come over and I'll do this part way through the wall elevation. That way it's going to pick up the fixtures. I can slide the dimension over and position it. Go ahead and pull that over and let's pull over the end to end dimension. Then we'll pull over the center line dimension. And then as I zoom in and take a look at the center lines, let's pull this out so it accentuates it. I want this dimension to go to the center of the water source and not the center of the fixture itself. I'm going to click on the dimension. You see the diamond. And as we zoom in pretty tightly, I'm going to comb over here and I'm going to pick up the center point of the fixture and then we'll pull that back towards the fixture. Notice that the center line designation has been removed. I will toggle it back on using the tool in my lower edit menu and then make a few minor adjustments. Let's pull that toward the fixture. 
slide down, pull this one toward the fixture, slide down, and the rest of this looks pretty good for the center lines itself. Zoom out a little bit, and at least for the intended purposes for this initial wall elevation, we'll do a little bit more work on the secondary wall that we're going to dimension here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and save this view and then let's modify the way that the camera callout will look in the floor plan view. When you go to save an elevation, if you haven't explicitly used the save active view, when you go to save something and you've annotated it in any way, dimensions are a form of annotations, the program's going to prompt you to save the elevation view. You want to make sure you do that because it has your annotations on there. So I'm going to save it. When we return back into the floor plan view, you can see that the camera I just created is E1. Now I've already created a final view of this and I've called it B2 and I also have a certain look. If you click on the camera, you can edit the way it looks. You can also, if you double click on it, it will open up the camera. You can get into the edit of the same dialog we're about to see. With this camera call out selected. Let's go ahead and use the open button in the far left hand portion of my screen. Open object. And then on the camera panel itself we have the name Elevation 1. The label's not on. And then you have the plan view display E1. You see that over here. A few things that I think are good practice, especially when you get a larger plan. You may have a kitchen, a bathroom, an interior space. I like to explicitly name these. You can see down below I've already named this B2. What I like to do is explicitly name these. I'm just going to call this B2A for lack of a better name. And then on the camera itself, I'm going to call this, I like to use the same name, B2A. And then I'm just going to call this shower elevation. And the reason I put this in the name itself, when I open up the project browser that has all of the components in here, let's go into the project browser and you look at the cross section views. You can see that it helps sort this information in a logical order. It helps me in managing it, especially when you have a bigger design. It's also very explicit in the naming of it. Now you're going to notice one of the things that happened when I gave this a larger name, B2A, in the callout, the callout grew. And you can set your callouts to be larger and grow dynamically with the text, or you can lock those in. If we go back into that camera setting, and then on the plan display, the callout label, currently the callout size, is set to be automatic. It will grow with the amount of text in here. If you want to lock that, you can turn off the automatic display. If I change that callout size from automatic, we'll set it at 14. Just above the callout size is the text below line. If this is checked as automatic, when you send the view out to layout, it will insert the layout page number for you below the callout label. You can also type in your own custom text. You can see that it's now much smaller. These can be moved around as you need to. There's a move handle in that direction. There's also a move handle in this direction, so you can kind of organize it around the text you have in your design. Now, when you double click on these camera callouts, the program will open up the camera. You can continue your editing. You can also double click on these through your project browser. Off on the right hand side, just simply double click on it the project browser is a nice way to navigate around your plan. Let's move on and take a look at creating the larger view. And let me just open up the existing camera I've already created here. We'll center the screen. This is in effect what I want to go through and create. Now the unique thing about this is it's actually two different rooms. Room on the left is the shower. There is a glass shower wall that is the room divider. And then on the other side is a portion of the bathroom where the vanity is. So when you create a wall elevation, as I mentioned earlier, and you generate your wall elevation, it will restrict that view to the room. Let me go ahead and place my automatic dimensions using the same tool we did. Again, it's omitted some of the dimensions because I have CAD turned off. Then to extend this beyond the room, there's a few different ways you can do it. 
And before we extend this beyond the room, let's look at the elevation tool and see what the difference is between the elevation tool and the wall elevation tool. So back over into the floor plan view, underneath the orthographic view tools, let me close the project browser so we have a little more real estate. So underneath the orthographic view tools is the elevation camera and a back clip. Same type of tool except the back clip will only generate the elevation based on the amount of click and drag that you generated. Using the elevation tool, if I click through the structure, you can see that it will show you the floor platform, the ceiling platform. If I had a roof on this structure, you would also see the roof. You're seeing the cavity of the walls on either end. This is a lot of information for an interior designer. You could clip this view and tighten in on it. I prefer to do it in the reverse way of opening up a wall elevation and then extending the clip beyond the room. And let's take a look at how that works. In the floor plan view, the camera that we've generated for the wall elevation E1, kind of noisy in here, you can actually see the clipping of that ends at the glass wall right in here. And when I go back into the elevation that is open for that wall, the wall elevation clips it to the room. You can extend the clipping beyond the room. And it's effective when you want to use a wall elevation, not see the platform information, the wall cavity information. The way you can unclip the elevation view is under the edit active view. I'm going to come in underneath the camera information and you're going to see that the default for the wall elevation is clipped to the room. And when I know I want to do a wall elevation and have it extend beyond rooms, I will typically start it with the wall elevation as we've done already, and then come in here and uncheck clip to room. When I close that, that allows me to select very close to the edge to get that clipping plane. So you can see where I've clicked is a little red selection. And if you look in the very bottom of my menu system, it says in the status menu, it says camera clip plane. That means that's the selection I have. And when I click and drag this, it's going to allow me to edit that view. Now you can click and drag to the point beyond where you want it, and then you could snap that in. You can also edit this view or this clipping in the floor plan. In the floor plan, let's zoom out and click on the camera. You can see that clipping plane is actually well outside of the entire structure. I can click on this, pull it back until it snaps right into the wall, and then when we return back into the elevation, it's now wall surface to wall surface, including the bath and the shower area. And then I can go in and clean up the dimensions. This is the easiest way to begin. I usually will take the wall elevation, run my initial dimensions, and then add the additional dimensions as I need to. So let's begin at the bottom. We'll use the extend dimensions. And maybe it works in some cases, but since this is a large CAD object, it's covering up the wall. It's extended past the wall surface. So I'm just going to click. You'll see an extra diamond where I clicked. And I'm going to pull that up until we get to the edge of that wall surface. Let's slide over. And let's see if we can extend that same dimension over, pick up the end of the wall. This is a centerline string dimension. I'm going to pull this down so it gives me a little bit of room to add dimensions for the vanity and the spa shower. Using the dimension tool, let's come in here, let's cut a dimension through. I usually will draw these up through the structure, not down below. Hit the space bar, then I'll pull it down to where I want that dimension string to be located. Again, I don't have CAD on, turned on in my dimension defaults. I've said that a few times. Let me show you where you could turn that on if you want to pick up all the CAD objects. Sometimes it can be pretty onerous. It picks up lots of different lines. So I have mine turned off. Underneath the Edit Active View, underneath of your selected defaults, we are using a dimension called the Kitchen and Baths dimensions. And we come in here and I use the manual dimension tool. So using the locate, you can see where I come down, there is a CAD section down here and none of the items are turned on. If you want to be very specific in picking up dimensions, 
you can open up there's an end to end center line and you can modify what the dimensions will pick up you can make this purpose built and sometimes this can be a very efficient tool depending on what you're doing so let me click on this dimension again wherever I click you'll see the extra diamond I'm going to go ahead and pull that over to the edge and now I've got my first dimension string that is going to pick up edge to edge let's go ahead and pick up the spa bench we'll pull that dimension over onto that spa bench and then let's go ahead and pull the center line dimension up I'm gonna save a little bit of time but if you wanted to pull those dimension strings up like we did earlier toward the fixture then that's a nice way to kind of clean that up again that's a preference the next tool I'm going to use is called the end-to-end -end dimension. We'll just click and drag all the way through the structure. Again, I do that up a little bit higher and then just pull it down until that looks to be where you want to have that dimension. Go ahead and zoom out. Let's go off to the right-hand side of the wall and we'll pull this dimension. Let's pull that out a ways because I want to add a couple of dimension strings in here. And then up to the top, I wanna to come in and do some cleanup on this dimension string. Let's click on this. Let's pull the extend dimension and pull that over. Now, if I want to take this dimension string and pick up the mirror. This is an electrical object since it has a light in here. And I come down here and I go to pull that. You see a little snap indicator? And I pull that dimension on there. It's not marking it or not adding a dimension string in there. In some cases you will find that maybe some things you can't dimension. What I'll do is place a CAD point at that intersection and then add the dimension on there. The CAD tool underneath your CAD point tools is a specific point, and I've turned mine to be pretty small, but the point marker, and I'm just gonna come in here, click a point on this side, click a point on this side, and then I'm gonna just zoom in and click a point on this because eventually I'm gonna dimension that vertically. Then when I click on the dimension string, the extra diamond, pull that down, pick it up, pull that down, and pick it up. So that's how you can dimension two objects that may not accept the dimension string itself. Click on the dimension up here and let's just go ahead and pull that over to the end of the wall and then we'll do the same thing over here. Let's go ahead and see if we can just pull that over, pick that up, and then at the upper most dimension what I want to do is make sure that we have the wall width dimensioned and I'm going to click on the dimension again where you click you get the extra diamond let's zoom in so we can actually see where we're going to dimension pull the extra diamond down onto the wall width this dimension can be moved around where you need it to be so we'll just go ahead and leave it right there so now I have my dimensions at the top level if you want to pull those dimension strings down we talked about that pulling it down towards the object this is a preference Turn on my crosshair so we can kind of pull that down and maybe use a snap indicator so they're aligned. Then I need to run a centerline dimension on the left section for the items. You can see the dimensions is picked up the niche. Let's just pull out the far end to end dimension. Let's use the centerline dimension tool and let's pull that centerline dimension down through, pick up the center lines. We'll just pull that all the way down, pull the center line so it's number two. Zoom in and see what it's picked up. Again, it's picked up the strip drain. Pull that dimension off. And I'm going to click on this. We can see that it's going to the steam port. Slide up, pull this toward the object. And it looks like it's missed the shower fixture I had on the wall. Let's go ahead and click on that. Zoom in a little bit tighter pick it up so that it is at the center line for the shower faucet. Again, that's at the water source. And I think for the center lines, that looks okay. Now I can pull the end dimension back. And then a little bit of busy work down here. Let's go ahead and pull these up real quickly. I don't want that to look like it is half done. So we'll just pull these up. I'm using the snap indicator. You get a snap indicator when you pull that up. That way I know it's aligned even though I have my crosshair on. And as I kind of zoom out, I like to compare the dimensions, make sure that the 180 at the bottom and the 180 at the top or wherever I may have it add up, 119 on the two sides. And the last dimension that I want to do is for the cabinet and then maybe also the mirror. 
So I'm going to select the manual dimension tool. Let's go ahead and click and drag all the way down through. We'll pull this over. And on this first dimension, it's omitted the cabinet countertop. That, so we'll just pull that over. And then I want to run one more dimension. Let's go ahead and pull that just right down, slide that over. And this is going to be for the mirror. And remember, I've already added the CAD point at the corners. I'm going to pull it off the cabinet box onto the corner of the mirror. And then wherever I click, I get the extra diamond. Let's go ahead and pull that onto the top of the mirror. And now I have the dimensions for the mirror and cabinet box and then the end to end. We'll zoom out and kind of take a look. Could be I missed a few in here. Maybe you'll pick up on that. And then when I close the elevation, remember I haven't saved it yet, it's going to ask me if I want to save it. These dimensions are annotations, so we'll go ahead and save it. Kind of repeat the process. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This was E1. And the first thing I want to do, because it's very noisy in here, let's use the move handle. Let's pull that over into the bath area. Then let's use the open tool. Let's come onto the camera panel. And I'm going to call this the main bath area elevation and I'm going to be calling this B1 and since I already have one called B1 we'll call it B1A on the plan display B1A I usually wouldn't add the A but since I already have a B1 down here I'll do that it's set to be automatic if we go back in to there and turn off the automatic and we put in a value of 14 then it will then square that up maybe a little bit tight. Again, in your project browser, you'll see that it is sorting. Nice practice to kind of use that to control the sorting, especially for larger plans. Before we switch gears and take a look at annotations and schedules, let's go back into the shower and take a wall elevation. I want to show you how a back clip view of this can look. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a view and let's zoom in so we can see this. I want to omit the shower rain head that's right in here. So I'm going to click and drag toward the shower bench. And that's going to generate that wall elevation. You don't see the shower rain head in the view. I want to generate a view for the fabricator. This is a custom shower bench. I can use the clipping tool, the back clip tool, and clip this camera and hide it. This clipping works similar to the way we clipped the view beyond the room. And we go back into the edit active view. And I'm going to turn on the back clipping. So that will allow us to back clip it. You can type in the value in here. And I'm just going to adjust that to maybe 15 inches. So it will back clip after 15 inches. And that's going to hide the wall information. And now I can go in and annotate this for my fabricator. An example of that. I have a camera that I've turned on a different layer. You don't see it in the plan view, but it's called the B1S for the spa lounge. Let me double click and open that up. So in this clipping view, I've gone in here and I've added the annotations specifically for the fabricator with the callouts, the R1 through R5, and then put in the information off to the side in a textual box and then did the dimensioning where each one of those intersections comes up. Using a combination of the back clip and the annotations, I've been able to create a specific view for the fabricator. You see the notes off to the side, and actually if I move these notes slightly, you can see that instead of turning off the bathtub, I just drew a CAD box right over the top of it so that it hides it. And that was a quick and easy way for me to generate this view for the fabricator. Let's switch gears and look at annotations with notes and schedules. I touched on this a little bit in session one when we did the floor plan. Let's repeat just briefly. I'm going to double click and reopen the view that we've been working on. In this vector view, the pattern for the trapezoid backsplash has been omitted. I've done that because I wanted to have a cleaner view and felt it was too noisy to also have the pattern turned on. If I switch my view over to the standard view, you'll be able to see the texture image. And to maintain a clean view as I switch back over to the vector camera, I plan to use a CAD box to represent the diamond pattern in a small portion for the backsplash. To accomplish that, I'll draw a CAD box. I'll change the shape to follow the edge. And then to add the diamond fill, I'll open the CAD box 
on the fill style panel. Currently there is no style, so there's a number of styles that you can select in here, angle hatch or a grid, a brick style. So there's lots of different styles you can select. You can also go into the library. There are a number available in the library. I happen to created my own style for this and as I browse into one of those styles I've already created and this is just a diamond pattern that I drew myself using a CAD tool and then I can use the fill. You can control the spacing or the scale of that and a lot of other things how you want the offsets to occur. Then we can use that as a slight subtle fill. The other thing I do is I turn off the line that is bordering this. So just double click back on there on the line style. I'm going to come in here and instead of using a line style, let's come in and just blank it out. Now there is no outside line style and then I can kind of shape that however I want. So that's one of the annotations that I might do where I need to do the tile information. That same offset information I discussed, if you wanted to figure out your tile layout, you can adjust that with the offset and use your dimension tool to figure out what this little dimension is, depending on how you're going to be laying out your tile. The next item is placing notes. Let's find the notes tool underneath the text tool, little N with a circle. And as we come in here and place a note, and we'll just call this my diamond tile. And then the type of note, I'm going to select bath notes. When I create a schedule, then I can isolate it to just show bath notes. You can choose the shape information. The text information is going to be automatically generating the next number. And then there's a few other settings, the size of the callout and that sort of thing. You can place your notes in a separate workspace. So kind of zoom out. I don't typically come over off to the side and place my notes. This might be a large view. I need to send it out a half inch scale. Plus I also don't want to clutter up my view here by putting a notes schedule in here. You certainly can. My preference is to put it in a CAD detail. Come over to your CAD details new detail and then you can select schedule. If we look at my CAD details, I've already got some bath notes created. You can create a new CAD detail, then underneath your tools, you can come down and choose your schedule information. I'm using a note schedule. In your note schedules that I've already placed here, you can come in, you can format the columns that are in here. I only have the 2D symbol, the number one, and then the text. As I scroll down into the notes information, the reason it's only displaying notes for the bath is because of the selection right in this area for bath notes only. You can see a handful of the other notes that are available for this particular project. And then the last one, very, very similar. We repeated this bath fixtures. Again, it's in a CAD detail because I like to maintain that. If I open up the bath fixtures, schedule is already placed. Again, this is in a CAD detail for clean workspace. You'll find your schedules underneath the tools menu, schedules, and in this case, I placed a fixture schedule. When you open up these fixture schedules, you can modify them like we did the note schedule, columns that you can add into your schedule, and then you can organize how you want those. I happen to have a 3D elevation of the symbol, quantity description manufacturer. And it's also dynamic, so each time I add a fixture, it will be included into the schedule. In the final portion of this session, let's take a look at creating the construction drawing. Here is a completed version of this construction drawing. This is a larger 24 by 36 sheet. I want to send the elevation views we've created out to one of the pages. So let me return back into the program. Let's go into our file menu and I'm going to come down to my recently used files and I'm going to use the layout that was created in session one. As I move over to page three, you can see that this is already set up. This is a template we opened. We started this in session one. And I'm going to send out the main wall and then the side wall that we've created. To do that, let's go back into the floor plan. I'm going to double click on the camera that we generated. And I'm going to come over and say send to layout. 
Now one difference when you send an elevation view compared to a floor plan view out to layout, there are two options you get. One is a live view and one is plot line views. Let's talk about the difference. Live view allows you to send different camera styles out. If you have a watercolor view or a glass house view that has the wireframe, those are live views and you can set those up to be either update on demand or update always that will refresh on your layout sheet. Plot lines is going to give you a crisper view. It's going to give you line weights. They're a little bit crisper. Live view looks really good. It's much faster. Plot lines a little bit more crisp. And then if you want to have those with color fill, you see my cabin's brown. It's going to give you the color fill. I'm going to use that in this case. And then the scaling for the view, I'm going to set it at half inch scale. This is going to the default page number three. And then this shows up in the middle of the page. I'm going to hold my control key down and slide that over. It gives me a little more flexibility or bumping and snapping. I already have some default text in here and I'm going to come over and this is the main bath suite wall elevation. Set it half inch scale. I'm going to come over into the main shower. Let's go back into the floor plan. Double click on the camera we just created earlier. Send this out to the layout under our file menu. Come down to send a layout. We'll choose the same plot lines half inch scale. Maybe pushing it to get it into this 11 by 17 sheet. We'll see what we end up with. It's very close. And I may be able to slide this over. I'm just using my arrow key and figure out how to get this very close. One of the tricks I might do since the dimensions are repeated on one side. I might just delete those. Close the, let's close the other view, and then slide that over, and that allows me to get both of the views on the same page. Now, the NKBA probably doesn't like missing a dimension on the side, so you can choose if that makes the most sense for you. I use the cross hairs on my cursor to kind of use the alignment so that those are both aligned. Some default text down here, just delete it, and that's the way you can create this layout. As I shift back over, you can see the completed layout for this project. If you want to get a better look at this, you can download this. It's called the Silverton Ensuite. You can download that from our samples page. You can also download a trial if you don't already own the program and check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. If you have a question you'd like to ask live, the uh... You know, my prepared remarks go pretty quickly. I saw a number of questions coming in that uh, we can take live. We're going to send a recording out. I know some, some folks couldn't see the cursor very well. And sometimes when you stream this online, it's difficult to see. Then uh, you can watch it at your convenience. If you want to download that sample plan, you can also repeat the process if you'd like to. So with that, if you have a question you'd like to ask live, uh, there is a raise hand option in your go to webinar control panel. Just raise that. When uh, Adrian calls on you, make sure you uh, unmute your microphone. Tell us who you are and uh, where you're calling from, and then uh, we'll see if we can get your question answered. With that, Adrian, questions? Yeah, Scott, it looks like I have a few questions here. The first one we'll take from Matt uh, and Cheddar. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Matt, and we'll take a question. Uh, it looks like Matt might not be available. How about the next question from Anna Janke? Uh, go ahead and unmute your mic, Anna. Oh, there we go. Had to find the unmute. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm calling from the Milwaukee area in Wisconsin. And I had a question. I noticed when you were pulling the dimension stringer out and placing it, you've probably done this so many times that your hand finds the right spacing. But do you have some good <laughs> tips of how to, I know how to do tab and like say six inches or nine inches to kind of get evenly spaced. But do you have a setting for that or are you just doing sure. that by feel? So when I when I uh, thanks for the question, Anna, um, and uh, I, I suppose you're talking about the spacing of the dimensions right in here. Correct. See my screen, okay? 
Yes. Yeah. So there's um, a little space for automatic the... dimension. Oh, go ahead. So the uh, the dimensions in in the automatic ones, you can control the spacing to some degree. If I go into the edit active view, and underneath selected defaults, and let's come down into the I'm using kitchen and bath, and let's go in and do some editing in here. So one of the things that you can do is there's a line separation in here. And that allows you to figure out what the separation is going to be for that distance of separation. So it should be equal at that space thing for this uh, scaling. Now, when I run a manual dimension, which I did and often do because maybe the automatics don't pick up everything that I need, um, you can tell mine, <laughs> in this case, it's not spaced exactly. You get a little smaller space at the end one. And um, I usually just eyeball it. Um, this clearly isn't. You could put uh, a little CAD block in there if you wanted to and save that in your library to help with your spacing if you want it to be exact. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just hold my control key down and slide that over and just eyeball it. So I'm not exact, I'm approximate. So okay, hopefully that thank helps. You. I've got some architectural drafting students and they want it to be exact. So I, I'm teaching yeah. them. I know you can hit tab and you know enter amount, so we I've shown them that too. I just wanted to see if yeah. there was a way. I mean, there there are some additional tools. I can use the tape measure and you know use this and um and and get it. You can still see I'm off. So if it's important to me, I'm probably going to draw a couple of lines as a guideline, and I use a layer called guidelines. And I'll just draw a few of those and then turn the layer off so you don't see it when it's on my uh, when it's on my construction drawing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Scott, next we have Georgette King. Uh, Georgette, if you'd like to unmute your mic, you can take your call. And hello, thank you for taking my call. I'm from California. Um, I have actually three questions quickly. Oh. I tried to download the Silverton after the first seminar and it's saved in an advanced version. My version is not that version and I wasn't able to download it. Is there a saved down version available? Question one. Question two is sometimes when I dimension an elevation, it says that it's dimensioned to the cross section and I can't get the little diamond to go to the correct place. And the third question is, sometimes the room is really tiny. And when I do a camera view, I end up deleting a wall so I can take a camera view and then I have to put the wall back. Is there a way to yeah. do a view with a camera without having to do that? Yeah, so all good questions, Georgette. Um, let's take your first one. Let me uh, pull over my, uh, my web page with the samples gallery. So I'm on the page. Um, for the samples, you can find this underneath the user center for samples gallery. And so the plan we've been working on is the Silverton. You can download that, uh, specifically the bathroom, the ensuite, which is the project I've been working on here. And if you are working in Chief Architect X15, it works fine. If you're working on an older version or maybe you're working in the home designer product line, you would need to download the trial version and then you can go through and, and repeat those processes. And so that's the best way to manage that with the with the sample plan. Can I save the trial version? You can't save in the top trial version. That's kind of what makes it a, a trial version. It doesn't time out, but it won't allow you to save. So that's what the what the situation is with the trial. And are, is there a limit as to how many times I can work with the trial? Nope, the only limit is you can't save it, so that's kind of okay. the catch with that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what version are you using? Um, 15. Oh, you should be X10. able to. Oh, X10. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's X, X15. X15. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of new tools in there for like the automatic dimensions that we were using there that have right. been modified. Um, 
So sometimes when you're dimensioning a wall elevation, I may have um, discovered that issue with the mirror when I did the dimensioning on the mirror. I couldn't actually dimension to this mirror or sometimes when you run a dimension, it says it picks up a CAD point, couldn't discover the mm -hmm. wall for some reason. And depends on the situation when that happens. It does happen. And uh, it could be that you could readjust your dimension. If I take this um, dimension and maybe it picked up a CAD point, I may need to pull the diamond and move it slightly and try to get it back on to the right location. And depending on the situation, it may not be able to pick up the wall just because it's being hidden or it's being clipped in a certain way. If you're using X10, we did make a number of changes that have improved that, so you may see less of that scenario in X15. And when you use CAD points, I use a CAD point for the mirror, and when it picks up and it says, hey, I can't find the wall, I'm gonna use the cross section line. I set my CAD points to be really, really small. If I zoom way in in here, probably can't even hardly see it, but I'll set my CAD point markers just to be really small because I don't like you to see these on my drawing. So I've set my text marker in here to be a point marker and it's just really, really small. Okay. Now, your last question is pretty common. You've got a small space and you wanna take a 3D view. If I kind of go back here, I've got a pretty darn small space in here between the bathroom, the shower, and the water closet. And a lot of times what I do for my 3D views is I'll take the perspective floor camera overview, and that allows me to see down into the space without the ceiling on it. Now, I try to avoid deleting a wall because if I've dimensioned it, then I will lose that dimension. So you can see in here, I've got a dimension that's marking many of the walls in here. And if I delete the wall, it will remove that dimension. So I try mm -hmm. to avoid doing that. So one of the tricks that I'll do is I might temporarily toggle the wall invisible. So I might take this wall, click on it, use the invisible option, and then I can see into the room. Now, there's also an option that you can hide walls that are facing the camera. And we're gonna get more into this in the uh, session that follows this one for 3D rendering, but in your camera tools, there is an option to hide walls that are facing the camera. So in respect to time, I'll just kind of point you to that direction. So that's another way that you can set it up for small rooms. Does that work? Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, Scott, next we have Lori Steinman. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Lori. Hi, Scott. Um, thank you for um, doing this. It's great. I have two questions, actually. The first one I'm going to piggyback on to Georgette. Um, I, oftentimes when I'm doing dimensioning, it will pick up um, points on the, on the, on the uh, elevation that, don't, that I have no idea what they're pointing to. And when I try to get rid of it, I can't get rid of mm. it. Help. <laughs> right. Yeah, not not uncommon when you're dimensioning. It won't pick up things. And sometimes it uh, will pick up too many things, right? Mm -hmm. And you want kind of just the right mix. So if I go in here and we look at this wall elevation, mm -hmm. when I did the dimensioning for my center line for the shower fixtures off to the side, I purposely ran my dimension inside of the wall to pick those dimensions up. Now let's go ahead and just delete that for the time being. If I run my dimension, well, let me use the center line. If I run my dimension out here, you notice it doesn't pick up a lot, right? It right. picks up almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So then when I come over here and I dimension, it's gonna pick up a lot more things. And I think I probably showed this earlier. Let's zoom in. It, it's showing a one-eighth center line, right? And if I'm zoomed way in, I may go, well, what, what, what is a one-eighth center line? My, my plumber's not even that accurate to half inch. Um, 
And so what I end up doing is I'll click on the dimension and then I may need to zoom out a little bit and see where these diamonds are and then zoom back in. And what, what I usually do is I use the scroll wheel on my mouse and I kind of move my mouse into the area where I see a diamond and then I can zoom way in and you can see what it's picking up. Turns out that's that strip grain that I picked up. And then to remove that dimension off of it, I just need to kind of click on it, left click, and pull it off just a little ways. And I pull yeah, it off I'm, in some, Oh, sorry. Okay. I usually pull it off in such a way that I don't pull it onto something else. Right. Because then, you know, then it's something else. Um, yeah. Now I don't have um, my other computer in front of me, but um, apparently I couldn't find, even when I clicked on the, uh, I'll try it again, but that, that might be helpful. So thank you. Um, the other question I had was um, if you go back to your uh, layout page. Okay. Yeah, sure. Let me um, just, I've got the, that set up as my Q and A page. Is, I know you've gone through this before in, in past webinars, um, but I love how you do the finishes in the, can you show us again how you did that? So yeah, um, <laughs> that's a common one that comes up, and uh, we did cover that in the previous bath session. Oh, okay. And I would point you to uh, I would just point you to that's recorded. It's on our website. Okay. And um, if you go into the videos, let me just open that back up. If you go into our video system underneath of our user center, mm -hmm. down to training videos. That video should be down towards the bottom underneath webinars, as I scroll down a little bit, recorded live stream webinars. <clears throat> and you'll see that when it's number three right now, the bathroom project. That came up, I believe, in the Q&A session. So it's towards the mm, end-ish, at least between one hour and, and one hour and 40 minutes. You'll be able okay. to see how we did that. Basically, I carry around a plan with me that is uh, for the purpose of that. So when I start a new project for a client, I have this new materials plan. It's got a saved camera in there. And all I do is uh, set up, in this case, seven countertops and I spray the materials on those. Those countertops are set to be one inch square. Mm -hmm. And then in my saved camera view, which I already have the right view and the right look for me, then I just send that out to my layout sheet. And then on the layout sheet, I use text callouts for the exact materials for okay. those items. It's amazing yeah, how I, even space them so that they're um, angling properly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I carry around this uh, material. I call it a materials plan, and mm -hmm. I carry it around with me. They're just spaced out. I use the multiple copy tool, so it's spaced exactly. And then my saved camera view is at the right angle, and I don't really ever do it any you know other than changing the materials out for yeah. a new project no that's great okay thank you yeah hopefully that helps Lori thanks for calling in it does very much okay Scott next we have Kristen Milne go ahead and unmute your mic Kristen hi Scott can you hear hi, me Kristen. yeah hi um okay I have a couple of questions one is um if you could just revisit quickly the how to achieve varied line weights, because I have sometimes I have an issue with that. I don't get nice, okay. like, you know, it, it doesn't punch out with thicker line weights. It just kind of they all mm -hmm. kind of look the same. Okay. Um, do you want me to go through my questions first, or we'll go one by one? Why don't you just mention them and then um, and then we'll kind of come back and visit with the ones that I can here. Okay. Um, another question I have, and this may not be NKBA required, but I am in the habit of annotating my cabinetry in elevation. And uh -huh. when I've tried to do it more efficiently rather than having to like individually type them in, um, I was kind of just looking through and turning on labels, but then if I had to change the scale of the label, it would also change it in plan. So I just was wondering if there's an efficient way to do it or if it's just, I don't know, if you have any thoughts on that. Sure, um, yeah. 
And another thing, like I notice in your rendering, you have decorative items and I do that a lot. You know, I think we probably all do to show our clients pretty pictures, but sometimes I don't wanna delete all those things to make a clean elevation. Um, but sometimes I, it, it's like if it's falling under like interior furniture or something, mm -hmm. I feel like some things turn, if I turn that layer off, then some things I do need go right, away. Right. So I don't know if there's just like a way to get around that. Sure. All, all good all, questions. All good questions. So okay. let, let's let's take a look at your line weights. So let's go back into the program. And the first question that I would ask you is when you are sending your views out, let me open up the layout sheet here. Let me just grab that. It's on my other monitors, so give me a second here. Yeah. And of course, it's not where I expected it to be. <laughs> uh, well, that's okay. Let's just do a brand new layout. Okay, so I have a brand new layout open, and uh, it happens to be my template that I use, and usually I send that to. Uh, page 19. So let's go to page 19. Okay. Well, that's a plumbing plan. Wrong page. Okay. So this is my typical layout page for a bathroom. It's 24 by 36, so it's quite large in this case. Mm -hmm. And when you send a elevation view out to your layout, let's come down, file, send to layout. Um, I mentioned that you can send these out as a live view, and okay. you can also send it out as plot lines. Do you know which one you use? Probably, I'm guessing plot lines. Okay. I don't know. So plot lines is going to, yeah, plot lines is going to give you the crispest view. So if line weights are important to you, they're going to look a bit better. Well, they'll look better than a live view. Uh, but maybe I'm and doing a live view if they're not. If well, they're kind there, of there may be more, more, yeah, there may be more moving parts to it. Um, okay. And and so then, if you wanted it in black and white, you would not check the color option, right? Um, right. And then your scaling factor, uh, you know, maybe typically half inch, right? Correct. Yeah. And then use layout line scaling. Uh, you know, it's without it open in front of me. Yeah, sure. I, you know, I, I kind of just do it without mm -hmm. thinking. So, yeah. but okay. Well, make sure you're using plot lines. And then the other okay. thing I would point you to is in this view, I'm using the kitchen and bath say plan view here in my top menu. That mm -hmm. controls the layer set behind this view, and it turns out that layer set's called the section K and B. And if I just click on one of these items, let's click on the uh, the backsplash or the cabinet. Let's click on the cabinet. And that will isolate the layers for that. And if you look at what the layers are for this cabinet, so the base cabinet, there's a line weight for that cabinet. And apparently the line weight for the cabinet is 25. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a thicker line weight. Let's click on the backsplash over here, uh, or the maybe the uh, let's click on the the fixture for the tub. The line weight for the spa is tw is 18 in this case. So right. that's going to be a line weight difference. You can also preview your line weights in this view, so you don't have to necessarily send it to the layout to verify it. That preview happens to be on my toolbar on the far right-hand side, and it's called line weights. <clears throat> I usually don't design with that on, 
but I'll toggle it on and so I can see what the line weights are. Okay. Let me get out of that selection. So you now are seeing line weights that will appear. This isn't um, great because it's on my screen and it will be crisper on a sheet of paper. So this line weight will give you a preview of what your line weights are looking like. And I usually toggle it off because I don't like to design in this method. So you can see actually right. my call out numbers, right, are pretty thick. Mm -hmm. If I just click on one of those call outs, you know, well, maybe it's not that thick, it's 18. So you can kind of modify, you know, these and these line weights can be modified based on your layers, your layer sets. So if I'm doing a construction drawing that's going to show more, um, you know, demolition or even some framing, those can be different line weights than is in this particular view for the finish uh, drawing for the kitchen or the or the bath. Okay. So just check your line weights. We try to ship our template plans with line weights that have variability, you know, window frame, window casing, that have variability in it. Adrian usually manages those, does a great, you know, a great job. Of course, those are in her view. And if you want to change those, then you can open up the template plan, modify them, and then use those for future drawing so that those line weights match your desires. Okay. Okay, yeah, because I love when it, you know, has the variation. It just looks so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Like your example here looks, it looks good. Um, so, okay. Okay. All right, thank you. So that's you. line weights, line weights. Um, the next one you asked, I'm going to turn the line weights off. The next one you asked about was uh, annotations. You're doing call, call outs for cabinets or specifying cabinets. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, like actually like using, having text rather than, you know, numbers that okay. coincide with the yeah. schedule. Okay. So if, um, usually I don't put the text on my, on my layout view here. Um, and so you can either put that text, and the reason I don't put the text in there is because I want to make sure that I can send this out at a certain scale on the layout sheet and I don't have to adjust it because there's text off to the side. So right. I manage my text in the project browser through CAD details. And if you come in and you look at this CAD detail, it looks like, uh, which plan are we in here? The ensuite. Uh, well, let's just open up the notes for the bath. So these are my notes for this particular bath, and this is in a separate workspace, kind of a blank workspace, and I can put in a text box, I can put in a schedule, and then I can send this out to the layout sheet. Now, I know some people also manage that through, let's say, a word processor or Excel, and then um, you can copy and paste that in here, or you can just clip it and send it out to your layout sheet as well. So I do know some people that do it that way as well. And so then when you look at my my completed drawing, right, this is coming out and I can set the scale of these notes at whatever scale is appropriate. It's not necessarily tied to the elevation view that needs to be at a certain scale. Right. What I'm talking about, though, is like actually how, for example, in your shower elevation, you have text that says, um, okay. I don't know, shower bench or spa bench. Sure. Um, yeah. So if we open this so up. So if I wanted to label the cabinetry actually in elevation. Okay. Is that just something you want to you want to label the cabinetry, and you don't want to use a number call out, right? Right. So. So in that case, I might just use 
a text object and say, where are we at here? There we go. And my default text comes in at three inches. So if you want to change that, you know, you can set that up to be whatever and the font and various things. And you can put a fill on it. So there's the text. And if you click on that, um, you can control the text. You can either set it up as a global by layer set, what text size you want, and that's controlled if you go into your appearance. Um, you can set that up for your your text to be based on layer. I used a rich text object that has some variability, but you can also use the simple text that can be layer based. And then it won't ever change, or you can change it based on layer. Uh, okay, so you're so it is something that I should just continue doing more manually. Like it, I, I was curious if it could be easier by turning on oh. the labels for the cabinetry, and sure. if they could pop up to your to the scale that you need them at. Um, okay. Where you're, where you're kind of taking a shortcut and not having to manually call out all the. So you can do that through the label, and currently the label for this, this is a ganged cabinet. Is that right? Yeah, ganged three cabinet. So this is a B thirty something, and that's the automatic label you get. Now, if you want right. to turn that label on, and you wanted to call it. Um, you know, I be 30 for lack of creativity, right? Then I can turn yeah, on. Yeah, or even I don't have a problem. If I have it in in plan, you know, if I click on the vanity and it's a, it's a base 24 or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, like, so now it's popping up. So what i experienced when i did this was that if i went to plan okay let's it, go back over the plan it turned here. on and plan okay well okay, but it's, that's a it's um, not for that, you. that layer is not turned on in the plan view so if i click okay. on the cabinet notice that in this layer set right it's kitchen and bath layer set the labels are not turned on so if you turn, them, turn on, them on so when I was trying this the other day, so when I turned mine on in plan, they were at the same scale that I wanted them in elevation. Okay. And I didn't want them to be, so is that just... Okay, so you want them to a different scale. So we turn on the labels to, in the floor plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there so, a way to control that between the two? Sure. So you see where I have this cabinet selected over in my active layer display set are all of the components that are make up that cabinet and here is the one for label okay. and at the very bottom you see where it's using a textile called label style yes oh okay, okay. yeah uh-huh well um, let's go back over into the wall elevation. Let's click on the cabinet and the label is also using the exact same style. Okay. So one of them you want to be different. Well, come down to the label style, click define. And since I want two different ones, let me move some stuff around so I can get to this. You know, let's say I want to make a copy of the label style and label style and we'll call it elevation. And we'll make it, let's make it pretty small. Let's half it. And then let's change it, right? And then when I go back over into the floor plan view, because it's using a different layer set, click back on the cabinet. That one is using the label style still. So okay, I can so hold it through the layer set and using the text style in the layer set. 
Okay. Does that work? All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, because I was not doing that and having to manually type them all in separately. So, okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. And, and uh, your last question was related to layers. Did that did that cover it, or do we? What was? It? Um, you know, I forget what was it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you can always send it in later. I don't remember what I think, asked. Yeah, if you think of it, send it in later to sales at Chief Architect, and uh, we'll we'll take a look at it for you. Okay. So thanks Thank a lot, you. Kristen, for your questions, and uh, I'll pass it back to Adrian here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Scott, we're at the noon mark or the hour mark. If you wanted to just take a pause and make yeah. some announcements. Yeah, so I uh, wanted to thank everybody for coming. I'm going to come back for a few more questions, but I want to be respectful of your time, try to get, well, we've gone a little bit over an hour, but do a little bit of closeout here. And just to, um, let me pull up my slide that I had since we're back right up to the uh, thing. A um, couple things that are coming up that I wanted to point you to. We have some upcoming training events. Tomorrow, Friday, we have a free boot camp for kitchen and baths, and that is available on the website. You can sign up if you're new or newer to Chief Architect. That's a great way to kind of wrap your head around how the program works. We're doing the same thing a week from Friday, the residential boot camp, and again, that's a free session that you can learn about how the program works. Uh, and then this is a series we've been working on. This is uh, the second of the series. We did the floor plan dimensions. You can find that underneath the webinar, the recording of that. We'll be sending a recording of this out if you've attended here and you can rewatch it. And then it will also be posted underneath the webinars in the same location as the floor plan dimensions. Next month, we're gonna be focusing on 3D rendering specifically for interiors. And if you're curious about how to uh, render small spaces or interior spaces, this will be a good session to take away a few tips that we have uh, very specific for interior rendering. So a few of those things coming up. And then uh, I always like to make you aware of a few resources that we offer here in addition to the webinars. We do training classes and we do one-on-one -on -one training. One-on-one -on -one training, we'll screen share with you. The training videos, support articles, and the Chief Talk user forum. It's a great resource for, for that. And then the uh, the training that I mentioned as we, we open up the website and we'll come back to the, uh, sounds like some beeping here. Um, underneath of the events and training, we do have the Chief Academy. That is the end of August and available as a training session. And so if you'd like to attend that, that's a, uh, a fun session. We bring out the entire team here and it's a great networking opportunity as well. So with that, let me um, let you go for the day. I will come back on for live Q&A if you wanna stick around. If you're an NKBA member and you wanted to get credits for the session today, you can self-report that. It's approved session for the NKBA. And then uh, we'll come back and do a few questions. Have a great day if you are partying with us. And uh, we'll come back with uh, a few more questions if there's people out there that, that have a few. Adrian? Yeah, Scott, we still have a handful of questions. Um, so there's some people waiting. Next, we'll take Karina Ramirez. Go ahead and unmute your mic, Karina. Hi, sorry, I think um, my name, Karina forwarded, so that might be me. Um, she forwarded the link to me. Um, yes, okay. Okay, so my name is Diane. I work with Karina, obviously, from San Jose. Um, I've got a few questions. So one of the things is um, the center lines to plumbing fixtures. So my experience so far is that for a shower head, for example, like the we plug it in from the library and it logs you say how high from the ceiling right but in real life we dimension to the center point and it doesn't look like i can shift 
the height of that on the elevation view by the center point of the water source. Is there an easier way to do that? Because like, for example, your elevation shows it at like something in seven, seven sixteenths of an inch, but we just like to round to round numbers so it's easier. Sure, so let's take a look over here. Um, in fact, I pulled my center line off the uh, fixture. So when I go to put the in typical collection of the center line for the shower fixture, it usually goes to the center of the fixture. And you can see the center of this fixture that goes from the bezel down to the bottom of the valve, right? So mm -hmm. you're not going to install your shower that way. You're not going to tell your plumber to go to the center of the fixture and let him do some math, right? Right. So what, you know, that's just because the fixture is that, that big. And what I do is I'll take the diamond that it pulls that on, and I will then manually pull that to the center line of the water source. Right. Okay. Then you said, well, I don't like that at a sixteenth of an inch. Select the shower, shower fixture, type in the uh, number you want, and now you can adjust it. So you don't select the dimension like you do in floor plan. You select the fixture in elevation. It works. It would work the same way in the floor plan. You select the object. You move over the dimension. Yeah. You see how I get? I get the finger. Right. Right. <laughs> the, the, and then you can click on it and enter in the value to move that fixture. Does that does that help? Yeah, it's kind of just refreshing my mind. Okay, great. Um, so the other thing is, is we uh, you didn't actually go over this, but um, in elevations, you can kind of put your dimensions and notes anywhere. But in a floor plan, if we, for example, re, uh, zoomed into one particular room for an enlarged plan, our dimensions are getting cut, cut off via the crop of the actual plan. Okay. Is there on, a your way layout, to avoid on your layout that? sheet. Yeah. So when you send this out to a layout sheet, do I still have one open? Let's see if I still have one open. Okay, good. So let's send our uh, our view out to the uh, to the layout sheet. So I'll come in here and let's do this. Let's come down, send the layout. I'm gonna send this bigger because it's a pretty big sheet. So I'm gonna send it at a quarter inch. Then if for some reason, when you send this view out, let's say I send it out as a current screen, you can't see the entire thing, right? It cropped it. Right. You got into this condition. A lot of times I see people send their floor plan out to the layout sheet, and then they say, oh, I should move this wall another couple feet. And then your viewport is missing the wall that is off to the side. This is a viewport, so you can click on it, and I've got a little red selection handle, and I always like to double check and make sure that I move that so that it doesn't hide any of the dimensions. Right, and we've done that. It's just when okay. we have like larger homes, but we wanna mm -hmm. focus, let's say, the cabinetry of one particular room, Right. And like we want that cropped view. Is there a way okay. to retain the dimensions? Or right now we use notes via the call out like arrow yeah. and a text. So is there a way to for those? So you want to crop it? You want to see the rest of that room? Yeah. Okay, or the well, neighboring that's... room, truly. Yeah. Well, um, let me see what plan that is. Um, yeah. Let me grab this plan. I'll show you what I do sometimes. Uh, well, I've opened a lot of stuff up. There we go. Let me open up a larger plan and I'll show you what I do in some cases. Let me switch over to the kitchen and bath. So in this particular room, I want to send the bath out, right? And it's got a closet and it's got a bedroom. And 
in this view, I put together a CAD box that masks things you don't want to see. So I highlight this CAD box. Oh. And all this CAD box is, is it's a solid fill of white. Right? If I pull this, let's let's just uh, pull this back. You know, I've got right. my furniture turned on, and I want to leave the furniture turned on because it's representative of the vanity uh, that's on the furniture layer. And so it's just a way to mask things. I've done the same thing in the closet where I've got some, you know, some cabinet, tall cabinets in there. And I wasn't too close with this, but the same thing. You know, I just don't want you to see it when I send it out to layout. Yep. And I'll still crop the layout in so that it's tight. You don't see this. And I left this label on CAD, ba CAD box to mask layout so that you knew what it was. Uh, I obviously wouldn't have a label in there if, if I didn't care about it. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Yes. So but we can turn it off and on. Exactly. So if I switch this over to a, uh, a layer set called interior, it's gone. It's on a different layer. Right. That, that CAD box oh. is on a different layer. It's very smart. Okay. I have one more question. Um, our okay. team, is that okay? Go for it. Um, our team passes drawings back and forth. And so um, I know that the like the I understand the folder structure of the images and that kind of thing. So everything retains when you pass it off to another person. Mm -hmm. um, is that the only thing that can keep it? Because we, we've lost it, basically. So I'm wondering if it was just me being a rookie or if there was something else I didn't understand to make sure that say, hey, Joe here's the drawings, here's all the images, and then they open it up and it's, you know, the tile pattern is missing from my walls. Well, you're not the first person to have that happen to you. Okay. So um, it, it is <laughs> file management, yeah, material. file management is a discussion in, in and of itself, but right. when you have your floor plan, um, all of these materials, the backsplash, the flooring, they're all, linked files and so if you've downloaded one off the website of something and you have it on your machine and you then you know send the plan over to your coworker and say hey check this out and they don't see it well you want to back up your plan it's called a backup entire plan and I usually put those in a zip folder and it will pull the materials in there and if you put that zip folder up in your you know your common uh, structure you guys are sharing then you should have all of the correct materials. So while we watch that video, it's been a while. Yeah, okay. there, there's an entire video system on that. And, you know, it's file management. It's, you know, kind of the busy work and the details of of uh, managing your projects and obviously important. This is the one I use. It may not be the best, but it happens to be, you know, a process and you just need to have one. Right. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Diane. Okay, Scott, next we have Renee Walker. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Renee. Hi there, Scott. Thank you for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. My question Hi, <laughs> my question is, you kind of demonstrated it um, within this um, webinar when you created this uh, hexagon or, or octagon shape. My question, and I don't know if it's related to this or not, what is the best practice to modify a tile pattern? Because I've tried several different ways um, versus like if it's staggered or if it's stacked or if it's, a, it's an actual um, geometric shape like a, a hexagon or octagon, how do I create something that I, actually specked out from a showroom to to showcase to my client in a way so that they can see that towel. Right now I'm kind of sketching it on top of. Mm -hmm. So is it important to you to see the image of the tile or the line drawing of the tile? More of the line drawing when it comes to for installation pur purposes for the contract documents. Okay. So 
what you can do um, if let's let me close a couple of these things that I have open here as it and as it relates to the elevation is really where mm -hmm. it's 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 important right um, so let's go back in here so I've got a custom tile that I've drawn right here in the center of my screen right right and if I switch if I change my camera over to the standard view you kind of see what that tile is so I've drawn the uh, the texture of it and uh, you know for the purpose of the video I didn't match it exactly but I could have so if I switch back over to that vector style view that's the line drawing of the tile right is that what you're trying to accomplish is that line drawing yes similar to this but a different shape like for instance yeah because sure. yeah, we have more you know how these new tiles they're really cool with these shapes but it's um it's hard to demonstrate that to the contractor in the tile installer you know to make sure that it's accurate when they install mm -hmm. have you used this tool called uh, create new pattern I have not so when you're in this create new pattern this is going to open up a uh, a new pattern box a separate workspace and when you open this up you have a blank sheet right it gives you a preview I did a 12 by 12 tile and uh, if you start drawing in here and we'll just do something kind of random it's going to show you the repeat of how this repeats and so now I have this bubble tile right wow. I, can save, I can save that in my library and uh, the team probably chat out the uh, the link to this but if you come in to our uh, our video system there's a specific video on how to create custom tile shapes wow there's also this there's also this there's also a tool that we publish called the substance designer and i'll ask maybe the team to maybe chat that out to the uh to the audience and that allows you to create the tile image itself that you can actually see in 3D. You can also, it's called the Substance Designer, and it allows you to create unique tiles um, yourself. You can upload images. So this is a way you can do more tile work because a lot of the tiles you download from, you know, wherever these tile sources are, uh, aren't the best. Yeah, they're pretty generic. and. Um my I, I just had a, a an actual project where we had to actually repurchase the tile so it is now oh. becoming more of a monetary issue <laughs> so i want it to be hopefully exact the previous, hopefully the previous the previous tile looks pretty good and you can use it for your second client yeah i'm gonna try <laughs> sorry about that yeah well thank you yeah. And in relating to that question, the piggyback of that is, can you do the same thing with the plumbing fixtures and the lighting fixtures um, as far as modifying them to make them a little bit more stylized to what we're actually sourcing for our clients? Is there is there a way in the elevation or is that just I'm I'm dreaming big? Well, you can modify a CAD block that shows you, you know, if I zoom in, well, I don't know if I can zoom in that well. If you wanted to change this electrical fixture in here, um, you know, there's limited things you can do. If it's a CAD block, you can modify the CAD block. The first thing I would do is try to see if the manufacturer has the exact object you're trying to spec. We have catalogs. Um, we don't have all the catalogs or, you know, sometimes they release a new product and maybe they have it available on their website or somebody else has it available, you can download it and see if it's more representative of what you're after. And then if all else fails, I'll just do a call out and give it an exact model number, say, you know, use the uh, model number XYZ for this particular object. Yes, that's what we have been doing. I had to do a sketch and upload the sketch to sure. the layout sheet so that the installers right. could see that i i so appreciate this yeah. this was helpful thank you yeah you bet okay scott we have just two more questions um next okay. will be laura mckinnon go ahead and unmute yourself laura hi scott so i have a question Hi, I, 
I recognize that the um, someone had asked already about small bathrooms and cameras. Can you review the angle change the tool um, within the camera where it has an angle? I know it's set at like 55. And it kind of doesn't give you enough. Can you review what some of those options are for the camera? Sure. And and then um, just to kind of reiterate, we will have a session specifically on interior rendering in August, but that's a long time to wait, right? Um, do I still have a 3D view up? Yes, I do. So inside of your camera, um, there's a few things. And let's go back into our floor plan view so we can peek at this. I've got a bunch of stuff open, so I'm just kind of closing a few of those items. Uh, give me just a second. There we go. Bath. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I just want to make it. So you see my camera here, right? In the floor yeah. plan view. And mm -hmm. if I tile my screen, and we'll get a little more real estate over here. Tile my screen by pressing Shift F6. Every time I move the camera in the 3D view, it adjusts it in the 2D view, so you can kind of see what this is. So you can edit this camera, click on it once, use the open command. You can also do it from the 3D view under Edit Active View. But if we open up this camera and you look at the positioning information for the camera, there is the information for height above floor, the tilt angle, let's slide that over so you can kind of see it in the 3D portion, the, the camera angle, and then um, a few other information settings that you can adjust for the, you know, the rotation and the incremental move distance. So those are all settings inside of the camera that you can, you know, modify for the positioning of it. Okay, what about the angle? I think it's in the camera position if you just oh, Yeah, so the angle right now, I've got it set, you know, at 179 or so. But you can, you know, you can kind of move your I'm holding the alt key down and the middle mouse button. And those are also changing all the angles and the direction of the camera just by moving that around. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I'm thinking about more of a wide angle or okay. a narrow. Well, that, sure. So you can control that through the, um, uh, I forget what that's called. What's that I called, think it's Adrian? Focus distance? Field of view. Field, field of view. view. Perfect. Well, you, you, you've got it figured out. So the field of view, right, is set at 55. If we change that to 75, Let's see what happens. Right, so that's going to give you a wider view. If you're looking at a really tight space, that field of view, um, actually I went the wrong way, 75 tightened it up. So you can maybe broaden that to 135. That's going to give you a broader view and allow you to do it. Now it's going to be, you know, maybe a little bit further back in that case, so you might have to move in. So that will allow you to adjust things. Sometimes I use that to see or hide walls that may be close. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Make sure you come back next month for the uh, the 3D rendering one. We've got okay. several several additional tips for that. Yeah, because when you're when we're uh, having meetings, we always we do it live, and so it's nice mm -hmm. to really understand how to use the camera angles when we're trying to show it. So that would be great. I I almost exclusively don't use the dialogue in there. I almost always use the little shortcut keys, the Alt key and the middle mouse button. Uh huh. Allows you to kind of zoom in and rotate, and uh, so. There's a few shortcut keys on your uh, on your mouse that may and your keyboard that may help in maneuvering your camera around. You might investigate. Thank you. I'll join next yeah. month. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Laura. Have a great day. Yep. So, Adrian, this uh, should be our last question here, and then we'll let folks uh, depart for the day.
Yep, that's right. Um, our last person is Kareem Mack. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Kareem. Hi, good day, guys. Good day. Hi. I have a question about um, the dimensions and, and the layers they are. Uh, when I dimension in elevation view or floor plan view, um, it 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 I it generates the automatic dimension if you tell it, uh, you know, if you click in the room dimension or something like that. Um, however, if, when I draw the manual dimensions, the manual dimensions will go on the automatic um, dimension layer as well. Is there a way to separate um, automatic dimensions from manual dimensions so they're both on different layers? In the same view you should be able to uh let's take a look adrian is that is that a true statement i'm not sure that that's the case anymore um what you're describing cream yeah. is kind of how chief used to function we used to always put all automatic dimensions on their own layers and all manual dimensions could be separated out um individually yeah. but now um we kind of view dimensions as one kind of, of all of you know per task and so you you generally want to set them up to to meet your needs as the task yeah because I've, I've tried um using the active view setting but when i do that it then means that everything whatever layer i set for that everything in that it, you know everything unless i change the active view um setting again you know because some dimensions I may want to show right off the bat, some may may not, you know, especially if you're doing like a, a pre-design, you know, you may not want to show all the dimensions, you know, just a few. Yeah, sounds like you've got that dialed in, Kareem. We did make a change um, sometime back where all dimensions typically go on the same layer, whether automatic or manual. You, mm -hmm. If you wanted to change, use the automatic tool, Place your dimensions, then go into edit active view, change the layer that your dimensions are going on, then all future dimensions would go on to your next layer, and you could separate them out that way. Okay, that's what I've been doing. Was sometimes a lot of work, you know. Yeah. I have to go select yeah. all the dimensions and then change it. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thought that was an okay. easier way. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Kareem. Well, uh, thanks everybody for uh, for attending. Um, just a couple of things that uh, I'll close out with. Uh, reiterate some of the resources we have available, these webinars, training classes. We do have physical training classes coming up the end of August at the Chief Academy here in Coeur d'Alene. If you're interested in doing that, it is filling quickly. You wanna sign up for that, you can go to our website and uh, sign up. We'd love to see you here in Coeur d'Alene. One-on-one training, we'll screen share with you and work through your projects, very efficient use of, of your time. Training videos, we have lots of training videos on the website, support articles, and then of course the user community called Cheap Talk is a great way to go through and learn from other users. Uh, tomorrow, we have a boot camp on kitchen and bath, and then next Friday, we have a boot camp for the residential, and both of those seminars are free. We'll be back here next month, focusing on 3D rendering for interiors. And with that, I will let you go and have a great day. Thanks for attending, and we'll see you soon.